Hello, this is Julie. Today Andy posted a picture of a card at the Make the Cut forum that he made for one of his children to give to a friend for a birthday. I thought it was really cute and uh, he gave a little challenge. He's um, got this design from the Pop-Up Card Studio Gallery but it didn't have a name underneath or it didn't have a platform on which the carriage could sit. So if we go into the gallery in Pop-Up Card Studio, we can see the design here that he started with. It's a simple coach called Cinderella Coach, and it's great for that little princess, he says here. Maybe you could raise it up and put a name under it. Well, that's a really good idea. So if you open a pop-up card studio and you you will get a blank screen. If you click on the heart icon, then click on the online content tab near the top of the screen, you'll get the online gallery. Now if you click on the download button under the Cinderella coach, it will open that design on your card already sized as whoever posted it gave the size. So what we want to do is a couple things. We want to make the card a little bit bigger because if we raise up this coach we, we need to raise up the entire design together. It would go off the page because this design goes pretty much to the top of the page. So if we go to Edit and we go to Global Operations, there's a few changes we would need to make. First, we need to change the height of the card by an inch if we're going to raise the coach up an inch, which is what I want to do. So I'm changing the height to 5.75 instead of the 4.75 that it was. Now the other thing I need to do is change the Y position of this coach. Now, the Y position is the part that goes from top of the card to the bottom. The X goes across and the Z comes out in front. Only thing we need to adjust is the Y position if we just want to raise everything up. To raise everything, I'm going to click on this tab on the Y and drag it to the left the low, lower the number, the higher on the card it goes. And I'm going to move this over until I see... Oh, it won't do anything. It will only go up 0.17th of an inch. That's because the card is still short. So before I can change the Y position, I have to apply the change in the height. So I'm going to click on Apply, and now my card is higher. Now that I have the extra inch, I can go to Edit and Global Operations. And this time when I move the tab on the Y, I can move it all the way to where I want it to be at one inch. I can use my arrow keys to get precisely this minus one inch. So this means it's going to move everything up one inch. Keeping in mind that y, y starts at the top with zero and comes down. So by making Y a negative number, it's going to move it up. So I'm going to click on Apply, and now everything is moved up. As you can see, it's moved up an inch, and that will give me an inch below this design to put my text. Well, let's see how far it actually is, even though I told it to move an inch. I'm going to click on the D to select this first shape here. And I want to see where the bottom of the shape is actually. So I'm going to click on the space bar to take me to the, the bottom of the card. And I'm going to move this down to about one inch. But now I'm going to hold the control key and right click until I see the yellow lines. Now when I have the yellow lines, that tells me exactly which plane this part of the design is on. And I see 
that its position is at 0.99814. I need to write that down because that's going to need to be the height of my letters to fit this space perfectly when I add my text and the platform or the anchor that goes on top of the text. So noticing this bottom position number is very important. So now I can go back to the back of the card, press the space bar, and I can take it to the position where I would like my text to be. Right now if I hold D and click on the on the horse here, I'll see that that the position of that part of the design is at 0.8516. We can see that it's 0.8516 inches from the back of the card. I would like my text to come out a little further than that, so I'm going to um, place the position at 1.5 for my text. So you see that that grid has come out in front of where the position of the, the horse is. So now that I, I've got this plane ready to go, I'm going to click on the T to add text. And since my granddaughter Lydia has a birthday this month, I'm going to make this card for her. So I typed in Princess Lydia to go with the theme of the card. So I'm going to click on Add. Now I've got my text here. And in order to have perfect folds on a pop-up card, we have to have perfectly straight lines. So I'm going to click on the cropping tool and I'm going to just trim off the very tops of these letters so that they are perfectly straight and also the same on the bottom. I didn't trim off enough. I want to make sure that I don't have any curves anywhere in there. The easiest way to do that is just to trim them all at once. Okay, so now that I have it trimmed top and bottom, I'm going to resize it. And the width, I think I would like it to be 8 inches. So I'll type 8 and enter. Now on the height, I need to make it the same exact height as the bottom of the horse's foot and those wheels, which we determined were at point nine. 9814 and press enter. That gives me the height of the letters. What I'm going to do is drag them up so that I can click on the center icon on the right side of the screen and then click on a line to the bottom plane so that these words should be attached to the bottom. We can go see by clicking on file print preview to make sure that we see those red score lines at the bottom of the text. So that looks good. So I'm going to go back now and add the anchors from the tops of the letters to the back of the card. To do that, I'm going to click on the space bar and you see I've got yellow lines. Not only do I have yellow lines on the tops of the letters, but I also see at the same time the yellow lines at the bottom of the horse and the carriage. Now this is very important because if those lines are not all on the same plane on the bottom of the card, then they won't attach and they won't cut right. So what I want to do now is change the color of the bottom to gray so I can see my lines. Click on OK and zoom in closely and set my snapping to one eighth of an inch. So I'm going to hover my cursor over the left side of that first yellow line until I see the red lines turn to dashes and the blue line turn to a dash and click left click. Now I'm going to take my mouse over to the right side of the screen and I'm going to look for the same thing. The red dashes and the blue dashes and I'll see the blue as soon as it lines up with that 
right yellow line and click. Well, you know what? I can't do anything till I select the pen and auto quad. Now it'll draw the lines for me when I click. Now the blue line's dashed, the red line's dashed. Left click on the yellow line. Now I'm going to go to the right side of the rightmost yellow line on the text and look again for the dashed red and the dashed blue. This gets easier with practice. And it gets easier with sm uh, smaller snapping. But left click when you get those showing. Now we're going to click on the top selection arrow to make sure we have this selected. And what we want to do is move this down in the design. We don't want it hiding the rest of it. So this needs to go to the bottom. So I'm going to click on this on the Z order, the first icon. And that takes it down below the rest of the design so that we can see it. Now what we want to do at this point is very important is to go back to File, Print Preview and see if we have red lines at the bottom of the text blue lines at the top of the text, then most importantly, look at the feet of the horse and the bottoms of the wheels to make sure those lines are red. If we didn't move anything else in the design, those should all still be connected properly. But if you move that horse and carriage, you're going to find out that these blue lines are missing. They'll turn into black and then they'll cut. You want to make sure that the red lines are at the, the folds or the blue lines. So you have reds at the tops of the tabs, blue at the bottom of the tabs. So it's important at this point to check your design. Now we can zoom out, take a look at it with our, our scroll wheel helps us to zoom out. Right clicking and dragging helps us to turn it around to look at the design, make sure that it looks the way we want it to look. Now if you wanted to cut this card out of 8.5 by 11 paper, that's a little bit too tall. Now we could change the height of the card, but then we'd uh, lose the stars. So if I can cut this out of 12 by 12 cardstock. It's not a problem. But let's suppose that we wanted to use 8.5 by 11 card. To do that, I would need to move these pieces down a bit. I'm going to hold a D key and click on one of these stars. So I've selected those. Now I could move them all down a bit so that we get it down to the 5.5 inches but then this star is kind of out of place. So I can use the split down at the bottom. It's the icon with the two arrows pointing in opposite directions to break those apart. And I'll click away from them and just click on this one star that I want to move and maybe just move it up a bit. Now I have uh, the design fitting a little better. If I go to Edit and Global Operations, I can change the size of the card back to 5.5. Five and, a half. Five and a half double gives me 11 and apply. So let's see. Oh, look at that. The card now fits all of the design and it hasn't changed anything as far as I know. We'll go to Print Preview and look just to make sure that everything still has the nice score lines and that the stars are all on the paper that is 8.5 by 11. So that looks good. My next steps, once I'm happy with the way the design appears to be looking, I'm going to go to File, Export, Project Rendering as SVG. And we can call this Cinderella Coach. 
um, with the name, if you like. This was for Lydia, L-Y-D-I-A. And save. I'm just going to save it to my desktop. Now, when we look at Andy's design, we notice that he cut the card out in white paper, but then he added pink for the background of the, the tops and bottoms. Now, to do that, you can go to File and Export Project Shapes as SVG. And I'll add that name. Lydia, and it will export all the pieces that we can use to assemble a multicolored card. I should save the file itself. We'll save the file. If I would have saved the file first, it would have automatically renamed my pieces to the same name. Also, if I would like to save a snapshot of my design. Now this is a snapshot of Andy's design, but if I want to change it to this design, I can click on preview and it will show me what my design with my text will look like. Once I like the preview that I get, then I can click on export and export a picture of my card make sure that it looks the way I want it to look once it's cut out without wasting all the paper. I can many times see my mistakes in my design just by looking at the preview of how it will cut. So since it's looking pretty good, I can click on Cancel and then just export. I'm going to export render to PNG in a high quality in about 640 and that I'll save this to my desktop just so that I have a picture of it that I can reference. The next step for me since I wanted to bring in some shapes is to go to make the cut and click on the SVG tab and I want to get the card that I just made which was the Lydia one. So I click on open and I'll just change the color a little bit. If I right click I can send each line type to its own layer by selecting to each its own and what I like to do is hold the shift key and click on both of the red and blue lines since they're all score lines I'm going to send them all to their own layer so that the red and blue score lines are all together and I'm going to simply call that layer score lines. Then I can get rid of the empty layers by clicking on the trash can. So now I have two layers, the one for the cut lines and then the ones for the score lines. And You'll notice that my score lines are all solid lines or not dash lines because I use an engraving tool or an embossing tool to create those lines first and then when I'm done with that then I um, do the score lines but if I want to get those nice pink backgrounds such as Andy had used then I can go ahead and import the shapes for the same card this would be these shapes here and they go to their own layer and if I want to I can cut those shapes out of any color that I want. Now maybe I only want the background. I can move it over here so you can see if I cut out that background then I can glue it over that part of the card and then I can glue the other background on this side of the card and the rest of this I can just send to another layer and hide it. I might want to use it another time so that now I have the background pieces that I can hide everything and just cut the background when I'm ready. And if I want to cut the card itself I can show those pieces that I want to cut. So cutting the background I'll just show the pink. Cutting the card, I'll just show the, the yellow layer. So this is 
a really nice project and I hope it's helped you to figure out how to change a design in Pop-Up Card Studio globally to be able to add text underneath an image. Now this will work with any of the designs that we find in the online gallery. So if you wanted to customize, let's say, this piano, you could do the same thing. There's my finished um, card as it's exported and it looks pretty good. So if we want to add a personalized layer with text under any of these designs, you should be able to do it the same way. I look forward to seeing your cutout designs. Bye for now.